Welcome back, everybody. Or if you guys are new here, my name is Michelle. And I'm Jose. And this is our food and travel channel. So today is day nine of our Hawaii trip, and we have a sandbar uh, scheduled for today. So what are we doing today? So we've booked a tour to go to the Kaneohe sandbar. Yeah. Apparently it's a sandbar that is in the middle of the ocean. Yes, and we've seen videos and photos of it, and it looks amazing. Uh, what else are we going to be doing? Any kind of grinds? Uh, Obviously, definitely, <laughs> definitely a ton of grinds yes. uh, for today. Hopefully that we get to uh, partake in all the things that we are looking to do. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. Yep. Stay tuned. Come along with us. All right. Let's go. So we made it to the boat, Don. Uh, it's called Haia Kia Boat Harbor, and it's here in Kaneohe. So we are just waiting for them to do roll call, mm -hmm. and we'll start getting on the boat. Yeah. So stay tuned. Um, emergency life jackets, they are all stored up in these ceilings right here. Uh, if for some reason uh, we are asking you to get them or we issue them out and you're close enough, just open up the zipper. They all come falling down on your head and you get first choice, okay? Um, no right or wrong way to put these on, very simple. Uh, Basically spread it open over your head. This strap will go around your back and clip in the front here. Um, very simple, pull on the thing and it'll be tight. If for some reason you are asked to jump overboard, we ask that you please stay with as many people close together as possible. It's a lot easier to rescue when you're all in a group. Um, and, and as well, if you do need to jump overboard, please make sure you don't do any fancy dives or any kind of cannonballs. These jackets are not the most comfortable. You need to make sure that you hug it very tight and jump straight in. If you do not, this jacket will hit the water and knock you out and you'll be in worse condition than what you came for. <laughs> so. Got it. Thanks for Thank you. 
three hours if you jump out right now. <laughs> I'm gonna be very started. I'm a decent swimmer. Right? <laughs>
out to the sandbar and it is amazing. Yeah, so we're here at Kaneohe Sandbar and I mean, I can't, there's not enough words to describe how beautiful yes, it is. It is so beautiful. The coral reef, we did some video of the coral reef and there's so many fishes. Unfortunately, there was a turtle, but we didn't get the chance to film it. But we did, you know, there was a turtle literally maybe like 50 swimming. feet away from the swimming. He was living just swimming kind of underneath us. Yeah, just kind of chilling. Uh, the views are stunning here. With, we're literally surrounded by mountains. Let's show you guys. Ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Yeah. And, and we're in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, Shit. if you guys saw it when we just did this 360. It is so beautiful. And since it's a sandbar, I'm literally, you guys know I'm vertically challenged if you yeah. didn't. Mm -hmm. I'm literally standing up and this is as far as the water comes up. Yeah. So it's just amazing. And the water is like crystal clear. Yes. Like looking, looking, look at our hands. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Stupid. It's pointing at you, it's dude. Pointing. Here, look. <laughs> that way oops look at how clear i mean you can see our feet and everything hands it's so amazing it's like we have been we have been to a sandbar before in destin florida uh it's the um crab crab island uh, sandbar and it's beautiful too but it does not compare no, no, to the beauty here no. at Kaneohe sandbar I mean, because the mountain ridges and everything it's just absolutely amazing yeah, it is. so if you come to Hawaii this has to definitely be on your list because if you don't you are missing out on something that is wonderful yeah I mean we can't I can't believe I don't even know the names of the fish that we saw but there was so many of them and just colorful fish yeah it was yep. just amazing
this was another uh, eventful and draining day, but in a good way though, because we got a ton of things accomplished. So what did you think about that sandbar? Beautiful, man. I, there's, I, I'm having a hard time putting it into words, what we yeah. experienced at Kaneohe Sandbar. Mm -hmm. We uh, went on a tour, which I will say was worth every single penny. Yeah. Would I do it again? In a heartbeat. Yes. Because it was the most beautiful sights that you could see with the mountain ridges, the fact that the sandbar was in the middle of the ocean, oh. and the fact that, you know, we saw turtles, we saw fish. So I was kicking myself when we got to the boat dock that I forgot to pack our snorkel gear. Yeah. So we were debating when we got on the boat do they really do a good job at sanitizing? I wasn't <laughs> sure. I mean, we all know that everybody does their best to sanitize. Yeah. So we're a little hesitant. And Jose was just, Jose was good. He was like, whatever you want to do, I'm willing to do. Yeah. Whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And I finally said, this is a lifetime. This is a lifetime experience. Yeah. Screw it. Cross our fingers and sanitize. Everything's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we did it. We took, we got the snorkel gear, but that was our, that was my first <laughs> <laughs> I've never been snorkeling in my life, yeah. ever. So the next step was overcoming my fear of snorkeling mm -hmm. in waters where I cannot stand up. Yeah. <laughs> so Jose again was super patient, super patient. And you know, we practiced and, and everything, you know, how to snorkel in, you know, the shallower waters uh, that was on the sandbar. Mm -hmm. And then I just said, Screw it. Let's go for it. And the timing could not have been perfect oh. because when we did and we swam at the edge of the sandbar mm -hmm. into the deeper water, we saw our first turtle here in Hawaii. Yes, that coral reef was beautiful out there on the sandbar. Uh, so once we got through kind of trying to figure out, you know, what was the best way to write yourself or or do this or do that? Because pro tip, if you're going to go out there and you're going to be doing some snorkeling, try to trim down what you have going on here at the top of your lip. If the you have a mustache. Yeah, because it was very difficult for it to grab suction down here, which I understand. So I was kind of constantly getting f uh, food, water into my mask which is fine because all I did was write myself and then dump out the water and then go back in. So no big deal. But that reef, I am so glad that Michelle was able to just say, you know what, let's just overcome this and let's get out there because we saw so many fish, turtle, the reef was beautiful. And you know what, I gotta say this, shout out to the people that we took the tour with. The two ladies, and I'm so sorry they we didn't get their names. so patient. And they knew that some people were scared to do certain things. So they were like, just grab onto this. We'll pull you out there. This is what you need to do. When you're comfortable, please let us know. They were amazing. So that tour was perfect. Yeah, it was Captain Bruce. Definitely recommend it. Links down uh, yes, in, in the, the description, deep description mm -hmm. below. Mm -hmm. But definitely recommend it. We saw so many fish. And the sad thing is, it made me mad. But, you know, I took a gamble. Uh, earlier in our trip here, we had our action camera, the DJI Osmo. Yeah. And we were at our first beach and mm -hmm. that sucker took on water. Yeah, it it's took on water. It's supposed to be waterproof. It took on water. So then from that point, yeah. moment, we didn't have any, any more equipment to film. Mm -hmm. So I was really mad that when we were there at the sandbar, we couldn't, you know, record anything underwater. But then our tech guy here, he was like, well, you could bring the phone down. It can go this depth for this long. And I was really hesitant, guys, really hesitant there was, <laughs> to do it. There was so much video and photos on that phone. So she was like, I don't know if I want to do it. And so, we debated back, I debated with myself. I had a battle with myself internally, mm -hmm. back and forth, back and forth. And then I was just like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to risk it. And boy, 
was I glad because when I did, I didn't get the turtle, but I did get a ton of fish and they were so colorful and they were just there in their own world, in their natural habitat, on the coral, just doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing, these yeah. fish. I mean, the, the variety of fish that you could see just in that small area was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But then obviously the, <laughs> the aftermath, uh, my phone, you know, it had issues. It was still partially working, but the speakers were just so, Yeah. they were just so, what is that word called? Like muffled. Yeah, like muffled. Like you couldn't really hear anything. Muffled and waterlogged. So we went and, you know, found a couple of different tools or whatever and let it dry out for a couple of days and it survived. It's going to survive. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to cross my fingers. Yeah. So it's pro tip, it, it does say there that it can go to a certain depth and then it cannot be in the water for longer than 30 minutes, but they're talking about the inside internals of the phone itself. So it's only like an IP68 or 67 is what I can remember that has nothing to do with the outside speakers. Those things are gonna take water on. If they do and your speakers are sounding weird, just give it time to dry out because there's no other way to get the water out other than to try to suck the water out because you don't want to blow into it because you could blow the speakers and or just let it air dry. So. So we're just gonna wait. Uh, the good thing about our phones is that we charge it by a mag charger, so mm -hmm. I don't plug anything yeah, in to the charging port. Do not lightning charge your phone. So guys, send warm wishes. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, I, 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 I don't regret the views that we were able to capture on it. Oh man, it was so beautiful. Um, and then we had so much grinds. Like we went to a place called Got Grinds. Mm -hmm. That place was They had really amazing. good masubis. Their masubis were on top. Yep, it's just a small local uh, mom and pop shop. They've mm -hmm. been going strong for years. And they we tried their gyoza there. Mm -hmm. We also tried their, um, I think it's called, pronounced gyodon, but it's a beef bowl and oh man. So juicy, tender and flavorful. Yes, that was. it was thinly, like I feel like it was brisket, thinly sliced brisket mm -hmm. with still fat on it. Ooh, yeah. And it was marinated over a bed of rice and mm -hmm. it was just, so flavorful and delicious. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we went and ended up getting some more grinds. <laughs> some more food. I mean, we're foodies. Yeah, we're foodies. So we went to Kamehameha Bakery. Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And what did we get from there? Guys, we tried to go to Leonard's, I don't know how many times, but the line was just ridiculously long. So we ended up going to Kamehameha Bakery because mm -hmm. they also have malasadas there. And we tried two of their malasadas, the original and a strawberry. Ooh, and they malasada. were good. And they were delicious. Yep. So, were. I mean, that sets us up already on a great note for malasadas. Mm -hmm. So here's hoping we can nail us some Leonard's, but if not, <laughs> yeah, we enjoyed, thing. we enjoyed Kamehameha Bakery's uh -huh. Malasadas. Yep. And then after that, we had to go back to Helena's. Yes. First time we went there with family, so we just wanted to chill. They ended up coming to Hawaii, so we kind of just had a nice little uh, a lunch with them. So we had to come back to Helena's because it was off the charts. The food wise, the authentic Hawaiian food was brilliant. Yeah, the pipicala, the pipicala short ribs. Oh my, juicy, flavorful, love them. They marinate those like, I don't know how many hours or like overnight and then they hang them mm -hmm. like from these, from these like metal rafters in their kitchen and they hang it uh, so that you can really like absorb like their marinade mm -hmm. and then when you're ready to eat them They you know, once you place your order, they, they go ahead and fry them and oh my god. They're oh, so yes tender mm -hmm. And we've asked a couple of uh, we've asked a couple of uh, family friends and everything if there was any other place here on the island that we could find pipi cola short ribs and they're like yeah, but it doesn't compare to Helena. So that's why we had to go back. Yeah, and then the Kahlua pork was so, if, if you're not familiar with pork, let's just say you're just not a fan of it, it was very flavorful. It had that nice little saltiness flavor. It was juicy. But then on top of that, they were like, oh, how we do it here, we add a Maui onion 
and a little bit of Hawaiian pink salt. Oh, oh crunchy, flavorful, amazing. Yeah, the Kahlua pork, it's cooked for 12 hours or so in an emu, which is mm -hmm. an underground um, like oven. Mm -hmm. the, the, the old, the, the old way. way they yeah. used to do it. And then that by itself is delicious. It's very flavorful, but it takes it up a notch when you add the Maui sweet onion, which is raw, mm -hmm. and then the Hawaiian pink salt. Mm -hmm. It just elevates the flavor and the juices from that Kahlua pork yeah, because even the, more. The Kahlua pork is already super savory. So that little bit of subtle sweetness from the onion, it's like balances out everything so good yeah i mean and then we wrapped it up uh, we, we got that we got the lao lao mm -hmm. which is the kalua pork and the yes. collared butterfish and that was the only way for us to get butterfish because the butterfish was sold, sold out Sold out. it had been sold out um and then we also wrapped it up with haupia oh haupia yes which, which is, is like great. a coconut mm, like little gelatin yeah. gelatin pudding mm -hmm. it's almost like a flan it's got like the texture of a flan but it's just mm -hmm. a little bit thicker mm -hmm. but it was extremely delicious yeah subtle sweetness very good to wrap up all of the savoriness that you just ate yeah so yeah definitely if you get a chance gotta go to helena's and get some traditional hawaiian food you won't be you won't be disappointed. Nope, not at all. So that kind of ends the day. Uh, if you're enjoying the content here, please do us a favor and hit that big old red subscribe button. Helps us to build our community here on YouTube as well as go down there and hit that notification bell. Just drops you a nice little notification that we've dropped new content and we're dropping a ton here in Hawaii. Don't miss out. Yeah, and guys, while you're down there, please definitely hit the like button and comment down below. Have you had traditional Hawaiian food before? And what are your thoughts about it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So until, until next the next time. time. Yep. Bye, everybody. Bye.